The mysterious discovery was made by Indian archaeologists. The world-famous Chatter Manzil Palace in Lucknow. It was built in the 18th century. The restorers wanted to strengthen its foundation, but suddenly discovered something strange. And it has already been called the find of the century. Under the ground there was another full-fledged floor with a gate for the passage of chariots. And even lower at the base at a depth of 4 meters, archaeologists unearthed a large boat. What the underground floors could actually be became clear to many in 1969 when the Parisian authorities decided to demolish the famous Les Halles market. It was one of the oldest districts in Paris. But the whole block was dug up to the foundations. And even deeper. Found an innocence in the photographs of 1973 is wrapped in some kind of iron structures. But its level gives an excellent idea of the depth of underground structures. There was one floor under the ground for warehouses, but the neighboring buildings around have an underground part. And it's much deeper. Researchers suggest that this may be part of the same catacombs. And most importantly, on the old engravings of the construction of the first market of the 19th century, it can be seen that these underground arches already existed then. And they were dug up too. If you search for Les Halsen photographs from 1973, and you will see all this. It's real. The famous Church of San Lorenzo Maggiore in Naples. Under it, archaeologists have already cleared the whole city. Pavements and walls, arches and passages, shops, vaults and even bathrooms. But how did the whole block end up under the church? An unthinkable story happened to Luciano Fagiano from the Italian city of Lex. He decided to open a restaurant in his house and started repairs. And when I removed the old toilet bowl, I was shocked. Under it was a passage to a secret room, which no one suspected. But then it got even more exciting. Under the house, a whole multi-tiered city was discovered, going underground for tens of meters. A real layer cake of millennial cultures and civilizations. Now here is the Museum of Fagiano. This is a tomb from the time of the Roman Empire, and a grain store and water tanks and chambers where the monks prepared the dead for burial. As a result, historians are faced with a mystery. How and when another one arose over the ancient city? The current Lex. Why are there no cultural artifacts in the soil layers? Then a shocking hypothesis was born. A certain catastrophe happened to the previous city, and it was bombarded. Moreover, this version is suitable for the same buried palaces all over the world. But what happened? When was it and what else will we find underground? The investigation of this historical mystery leads us to Venice. Tourists coming here are usually worried about the question of why the city is flooded. And how shocking many are the answers of the guides. According to the official version, Venice was not flooded at all. Allegedly, it was built on the water and with canals. But how did this happen in the Middle Ages? What is under the floor of the first floors of houses? Is there water in the basement or not? There is still land under Venice. This is a marshy island, or rather an archipelago. But the soil is so shaky that you can't build houses directly on it. Need a pillow. And hundreds of thousands of larch piles were driven into the muddy bottom, and tons of stone were brought. Moreover, according to different versions, the trees were taken either from the Alps or from the Perm region. And this is more than 4,000 kilometers. In the Middle Ages, such a route took at least six months. And if we take into account the fact that at the beginning the Venetian Republic was not the queen of the Adriatic, that is, it had not yet reached such heights and such wealth, then who built it? But that's not all weirdness. Piles 8 to 10 meters long. How and with what were they killed? And most importantly, why settle in such a difficult place to develop? Most likely, as many historians are sure, by that time some more ancient city had already been in this place. 
And by the time they arrived on these islands, there was already something there. Most likely, there were already some buildings. And most likely, they did not come, as it were, to a completely empty place, to empty bare islands. But was this place then islands? What is the main question here? Maybe there was no water there? And all this territory was part of the mainland? And inhabited and inhabited long before that? That is, Venice was once flooded. Look, through this glass door, you can see that the floor is almost flush with the window. They didn't build like that in the Middle Ages. This means that there was no water during the construction of this building. Enough to look. And it all becomes even better when the channels dry up. These are the classic ebb and flow. Only very strong ones. Here you can clearly see that the bottom of the canal is lined with paving stones on which people used to walk and carriages drove. And look at those windows. It can be seen that initially these were not windows, but doors, which then had to be bricked up so that water would not flow into the building. And here, too, the entrance to the house was originally much lower than the standard modern water level. And here are the steps that go to the very bottom. And here everything is the same. Here are seven steps overgrown with algae, which no one has walked for a long time. But at the time of construction they were needed. And that means that the water level at that moment was at least a meter or a half lower. In addition, according to scientists, the city is still sinking. At a rate of 3 millimeters per year. Traces of this are everywhere. Here is another great door. Once it went straight to the pavement. But the water rose and had to be covered with bricks. And again the closed doors with steps under the water. Ordinary stone foundations that go straight into the ground, and no piles. The standard channel depth is half a meter. A six-story building can go completely underwater here only in a Hollywood blockbuster. Look at the map. According to geologists, one need only look at the rugged coastline around Venice to understand that it was originally a port city on land on the shores of the Adriatic Sea. And the area around was suddenly flooded. Judging by the age of the houses and the age of these flooded parts, it happened not so long ago, maybe 200 to 300 years ago. And this again fits into the version of the Little Ice Age hypothesis. This is another flood, or a quilta, high water. The ocean level is rising and Venice continues to sink. And not only the one in Lagoon, but also that part of it that is on the continent. Do these shots remind you of anything? Rivers and canals are connected to the sea. The streets are turning into smaller canals. And here you can already move only by boat. It looks like that's what happened. The Venetian Grand Canal was the main river, which connected with smaller canals. The streets turned into them after the flooding of the city. Water also came on the old foundations of buildings. New buildings of modern Venice were erected. The researchers are sure. More recently, this territory was land with gardens and fields, houses and roads, rivers and port facilities near the water. After the catastrophe that flooded the city, the inhabitants did not leave it, but adapted to the new conditions. Doors were blocked, windows and balconies were turned into moorings, bridges were built, turning an ordinary city into that wonder of the world, which is now admired by tourists from all over the world. But what was this disaster? According to historians, the same one that flooded almost all the coastal cities of the Black Sea and other regions. Venice is not the only city that may have been flooded or buried. Look at these shots of American Seattle. Looking at these neat streets and modern houses, it is hard to believe that they go underground for many meters. The first floors of all buildings in the historic center are completely buried. This popular photo shows an approximate level of the Seattle dungeons. What happened to the city? According to official historians, it was covered by the townspeople themselves. 
but in order to avoid flooding. Initially, the city was also built on the coastal swampy area, and it too was flooded. As a result, the toilets and bathrooms on the ground floors were often turned into fountains. Historians say that after a grandiose fire in 1889, houses here were ordered to be built only from stone. But most importantly, they decided to make them with beautiful facades only from the second floor. The first one is technical. And then they bury it. As a result, the level of the city was raised by several meters and leveled. The first floors of Seattle ended up deep underground. And some of them are now even guided tours. Some are sure that the catastrophe could have occurred due to volcanic eruptions. After all, look. Recently, the eruption of a small volcano on the island of La Palma led to a local end of the world on a separate paradise island. Houses fell asleep under the roof. Imagine if there are many such volcanoes, and in different parts of the world. But when exactly did this all happen? According to this version, the worst began in 1812. But it was not a war with Russia. It was this year that two of the largest volcanoes woke up on the island of St. Vincent in Indonesia. And that was just the beginning. According to researchers, climate disasters led to the flooding or falling asleep of cities, as well as to mass deaths of people. But some put forward even bolder ideas. It may have happened from time to time. Whole climate change. And then there was a global climate change, after which there was a redistribution of the political map. Moreover, people could prepare for these catastrophes. Researchers are sure that the most powerful fortresses of the 19th century were built to protect against natural disasters, and not just for military operations. And perhaps the best example is the huge Kalmogdan fortress in Belgrade, another one of the most mysterious European cities. In the 19th century, such high walls were no longer needed. With the development of artillery, the fortresses became lower and lower, sinking into the ground. But the Belgrade fortress demonstrates the reverse process. Its walls were becoming higher and higher under a certain, as it is considered, strictly adjusted slope. Was Kalmogdan its steep walls only supposed to protect against the cores from the outfits? Was Belgrade exposed to natural destruction? There are footprints here that point to it. Strange elevation changes and other signs of buried buildings are also clearly visible. On the territory of Kalmogdan there are many earthen hills, from which the remains of buildings protrude. Around the remnants of the walls, going underground, or half-filled arches that were once gates or entrances to what is now underground. Walled loopholes at ground level The entire area inside Kalmogdan was densely built up, and it's all underground now. The Turks peacefully left here in 1867. During the First and Second World Wars, Kalmogdan did not suffer very much. And yet, today we see catastrophic destruction that could not have occurred on its own in 150 years of the calm existence of the capital's citadel. So maybe all this should be considered as a whole. As some researchers suggest, special equipment was installed here, which together with earthen oxen, high walls and corner pantheons, made it possible to protect people from natural disasters. All this could, for example, reflect air masses or dust storms, create a protective umbrella or dome. Judging by the destruction in the Belgrade fortress, these attempts were still unsuccessful. The fortress clearly survived some kind of natural disaster, and possibly more than one. After all, we see the same thing even where there could not be a cultural layer. Not only in large cities but also in old abandoned manor houses. Here is an old manor house in Yaroslavl. There has never been asphalt. 
and the covered floors here cannot be attributed to the reusable masonry of the pavement street. The house was obviously covered in something. Like many hundreds of other houses around the world. But why is it hidden? As some experts assure, the catastrophes that led to this may yet return. Perhaps they were cyclical. Subscribe to the channel, write your opinion in the comments. Together we will discover the truth about our past.